Hey guys, this video is covering my thoughts and opinions and generally just a brutally honest view on Watcher of Realms. I've been playing it for the last around 10 months now. I think about 10 months is right. I've completed almost everything there is to do in the game. I've made guides, videos, tiers, everything on pretty much everything there is to know about the game. So I feel like I'm in a pretty good position to give a fairly reasonable take on the state and development of Watcher of Realms. Brief backstory of development. The game has been in like an early soft launch stage for the last three years. They were over numerous different servers and as of I think a couple of weeks ago they merged all of the servers together into one kind of like pre-release like test server and that is what my account is in when you join the game on global release if you're looking to join the game you will be on a different new server so you don't have to worry about playing with super old accounts so that's the state of the servers that's how long the game's been running overall and over that time a lot of things have changed in water of realms new content has come into the game existing content has been changed new resources were added existing resources acquisition has been changed so there's a bunch of different things that have happened to the game and I'm just going to give my thoughts on the game's development as a whole and on its current state. The development, in my opinion, in my time playing, it has been a bit shaky. They have been changing things constantly. They've refactored and refurbished the UI a lot for a lot of places. They've added a bunch of new heroes. They've added new factions. They've added new stages. You know, they've, they've done quite a lot of things to try to improve upon the game, which I do really respect. Overall, I think the game is good the campaign is good the campaign is very fun and i think that's the main thing going for watcher of realms genuinely the campaign is the most enjoyable part of the game if you played through the campaign and you found yourself not enjoying it unless you have like a really particular thing you're after watcher of realms isn't for you likewise if you're seeking a new gacha game to play and be really competitive in pvp watcher of realms again probably isn't for you PvP exists, they have arena, however the arena system in Water of Realms is really not great. That's largely because PvP is incredibly meta heavy, it's incredibly dominated by just a couple of heroes, Hatsu and Salazar are just dominating arena to hell and back. And arena isn't normal PvP, because this is a tower defense game, you, you're not facing each other directly, you're both fighting waves and whoever clears their wave fastest wins. And that basically means there is only one strategy for arena, kill fast. There's no bruiser teams speed cleave teams immunity teams revive teams there's nothing like that there is just a fast kill team they have different arena days that require different teams but in each of these arena days the best thing you can do is clear fast so it doesn't really change the meta so pvp is not good in water of realms my suggestion is if you enjoy the campaign it's a good game it's a really good game for the actual gameplay aspect the combat system the way the campaign progresses that's all good fun and i think that is what makes watcher of realms and actually a really good game i think it beats most modern gachas because the gameplay system is fun if you were to play most typical turn-based games your gameplay loop is smash the campaign pay no attention to it just beat it as fast as you can max x hero as fast as you can and use them to farm fodder to level up the next heroes right to six star the next hero you use this particular farming stage with this particular farming hero i really really hate that way of playing the game water of realms has a lot better quality of life and overall is a lot nicer on that so i guess i would say water of realms is a very good core game in itself it doesn't feel like they're running away from being a gacha but it feels like they're still focusing on having actually enjoyable gameplay so i do like water of realms that's the reason i've played it for so long and why i'm continuing to play it and we'll play it again through launch it's actually a fun game and I'm genuinely looking forward to making a new account and playing it all fresh from a new account with new heroes and all that stuff because it is fun. It's nice to solve puzzles is kind of how the game feels. I wouldn't really want to restart on almost any other gacha because it just feels like you're losing out. If you restart on Summoner's War or Raid or something, you're just losing everything you had. But for me in Watcher of Realms, I'll have the chance to play through campaign again, but with a different team with different heroes that aren't maxed. For me, I'll enjoy trying to figure out how to beat stages as quick as I can. My goal will be how quick can I clear Gear Raid 2? Because I think that's the one where you can do a bit more strategic stuff. So anyway, I think the game is good. I think the content is good. I think the core gameplay loop is really fun. I think that's the thing that holds Watcher of Realms together. The main issue is the PvP. So that's kind of the overall stance on where I think the good and the bad is. There's a whole bunch of pros and cons, but it'll be a very long video if I do that. My main hang-ups with Watcher of Realms, this is kind of the brutally honest part, is the developers are not honest enough. That's a big concern of mine. If you've seen my previous videos, I've gone on about this quite a lot. They are not transparent with key rates in the game even. It took them a long time to actually show what the rates were for Legendary Lords. We only learned at the start of this year that they had a, a tenth of a chance of being summoned compared to a normal Legendary Hero. They are 0.05% chance. 
rather than 0.5. And that was me hassling a lot in the chat and me hassling the de developers directly saying that this is clearly not accurate. And it took them a long time to actually show it in game. So I think there's a lot of work that needs to be done in transparency. Likewise, tool tips for skills and effects. A lot of them don't give you the full breakdown on how the mechanics actually work, such as healers. If you go to their healing tooltip, it just says what it scales and it doesn't tell you how much. So it's very hard to know how things actually work because they just aren't transparent. I don't want to make this a super long rambly video. It's my honest take of the game. I think it is a good game. I think it is fun. I think it has a good future ahead of it. I think the art is great. I think the gameplay is great. I think some of the newer content they've been adding, such as they added new chapter stages to the campaign and they're going to add another one soon. So this is chapter 9 they added, which I had a lot of fun with. And chapter 10 I think is coming out sometime soon. That's all good fun. My main issues with Watcher of Realms is it's kind of a single player game. The guild boss is not really collaborative at all. You, your whole guild, you just attack the dragons. You can attack twice a day. You get a score based on damage you dealt to the dragon. And then when you clear the boss, everyone gets double rewards. That's it, there's no real communication. They are looking into adding guild versus guild, but because of the way the guild system works, I don't, and the PvP system works, I don't know how they're gonna do that in a, a more collaborative way. There isn't a lot of collaborative gameplay at the moment. I think the game has its issues. I think most of the issues are how the developers are handling communication with the players and some shadiness around not being super honest about certain things, but I think the actual core game is good. Regarding some of the updates and changes, I think they've had some bad decisions and there's some bad direction recently. For example, there's this faction called Chaos Dominion which you can only get through a limited resource called Ancient Summoning Crystals. You can get them through being placed in the top rank of arena, the top bracket, by buying them with an arena currency, you can get them from clearing hard content, you can get them from login bonuses, but you can get a lot of them if you buy them. And this faction, bar a few of these heroes, these three here, the rest of them you can only get through that rare summoning crystal. And they are built for arena, so it just feels kind of pay to win. And they put a lot of focus on this faction recently. They said they're going to add more. So that's not a direction that was enjoyed. They've also, in recent updates, massively nerfed the acquisition of XP. On one side, I get it because people were progressing way too fast, getting bored because they hit the end game very early and there wasn't a lot of content. But on the other side, it's not very fun to drag that kind of stuff out. Another problem was autos are, there's no like swipe, whatever you want to call it, where you instantly beat a mission. You have to auto each one and you are limited on the number of autos you can do each day. I've used all mine up, as you can see, zero auto fights. I can just auto by clicking it like this each time. I don't like quality of life being hidden by that sort of stuff, but recently they did add the way to buy them from the shop for in-game gold sometimes or a very small amount of diamonds but i just buy them with gold so they are kind of aware that players don't like certain things now making changes there's kind of this weird give and take where can players complain and then the developers pull back a bit but then they keep going back it feels like they're kind of trying to see what they can get away with so honestly i'm a bit concerned how this game will change after launch if it becomes successful i have a feeling they might push out some changes that we don't like but overall i do think the developers are pushing the game in a good direction they are adding new content they do focus on adding new heroes more than the players would like but i do think they are adding new content we have had some new stages come out that are very difficult they are building the end game out more they are working on guild versus guild overall i think the game is a good game i do think it has a good future and i think if you're considering playing it give it a go and my suggestion would be to try at least a few chapters of the campaign the first chapter is pretty much just a tutorial the real fun begins once you get two or three chapters in and you have to figure out how to beat certain stages this is gear raid one which is like a aoe mage gear raid one of the, the main ways you get gear in the game one of the main three raids and it's fun building a team that works and trying to figure out your strategy and your placement so i think the game is good i think it has a good future i think the developers have had some dubious decisions that I hope they learn not to go that way because there's been a massive amount of backlash over some of those decisions in the past, but it's a gacha. No one makes a gacha out of love. These games are made for money, right? That's, ha that's just the reality. A lot of waffling aside, I think it's a good game. I think it has a good future. I think the developers are moving in a reasonable direction and they do listen to players on occasion. I just think they need to be more transparent because there are some things where the players really need to know what's what and they aren't telling us what's what. So. That's my biggest hang up, but aside from that, the game is good. As a PvE game, if you treat it kind of like a single player game with a, with a nice community to be fair, it's a great game. If you're looking for a more PvP centric experience, it's really not a great game at the moment. Guild vs Guild is around the corner, but we don't know exactly how that functions. So that's pretty much all I've got to say in a short summary of how I feel about things without going too far into any particular area. 
overall, I think it's a good game. It's my favorite gacha I've played in recent years, and hopefully Global Launch goes well. Anyway, that's it for this video. I'll hopefully see you guys on July 13th with Global Launch on the new server. Have a great day, take care, and bye-bye.